lips and like I want to have like uh, 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 you want to be like Bessie? Yeah, like I want at least some form of companionship. Like, yeah, I'm not expecting like a fairy tale ending, but like be, be don't be like attached to the hip. Just be like yeah. a friend, a friend that you have to you know, go with. <coughs> just realize that best case scenario. You'll just tolerate each other. Yeah. Probably. But tolerate is not even like it. Just tolerate. I mean, my dad and his college roommate are still best friends to this day. Yeah, I think that's I like don't know any the best thing girl <coughs> who's still friends with their roommates in college. My mom had really There's nice a reason for that. And my sister did too. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to start off with big ideas. Unless you guys want to go over any particular question 14. on the AP classroom. 14. I've <laughs> only got two. You only got 20? Mm, I did like three. <laughs> I was like actually really doing them for you. I was doing it on the whiteboard. Where'd it go? Oh, 14. Here we go. I actually did really good on these. I'm proud of myself. I actually got like all the right answers on these. Nice. I'm okay. getting good this one. So, 14. <laughs> this is a good question. I've been asked about this one all day. Um, it says if government spending, let me increase the sizes. I think I'm zoomed out a little bit. Um, oh no, I was, okay. Oh my God, too much. Okay, so if government spending increases and crowds out an equal amount of private investment and physical capital, then the increase of government spending will. Okay, so let's break up this into several parts. Short run effects, here we go. Government spending increasing causes aggregate demand to shift to the right. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I like the agreement. At least you concur. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> aggregate demand, uh, sorry, uh, government spending increasing causes aggregate demand to go up. Okay, so aggregate demand shifts to the right for, you know, however much space that is. It just graphs. It should be. Um, but at the same time, it crowds out private investment by the same amount. So the question is, what is crowding out? Because that's like a decent part of the test. Like the test is titled, Fiscal Policy Crowding Out and Comparative and Absolute Advantage. So we're talking about like a third of the questions about the idea of crowding out. Uh, the long run consequences of deficits. Yes, because when you increase your spending, the government increases the spending, eventually it's gonna run a deficit, which means doesn't have as much money. Like it's spending more than it takes in in taxes. Um, and what does crowding out do to interest rates? Increases. Increases. So deficit spending increases interest rate. That the story is called crowding out. So crowding out is basically saying interest rates are going up because of deficit spending. <coughs> but it crowds out, meaning it raises interest rates the same amount, an equal amount that private investment. Remember, investment is investment spending. So like investment spending, business spending is like typically based off of interest rates. Like, can I take out loans to buy capital? Well, depending on interest rates. But if interest rates are going up and investment spending is going down because it's too expensive to take out loans, but it's going down by an equal amount as that spending change. So where does aggregate demand shift now? Right. Investment spending is decreasing because interest rates are too high. To, to the left, left, but how far? To the, to the equal amount that it shifted to the right. So it goes back to equilibrium. Okay, that was supposed to be at equilibrium, which means nothing changed. Okay. Output and price level remain unchanged. Because it goes, okay. And like it shifted, like we spent more money. Yeah, we like fixed the economy. But at the same time, that spending raises its interest rates and then hurt the economy. We're back to where we started. Okay. That's what the question is saying. Okay. Have we ever yeah. done that in society? Uh, I, yeah, probably. Where it's like, I helped, I hurt. Like, think of the stimulus check that you got in the mail the during. Yeah, the stimmy. The stimmy raised, like, more spending. But now, because that was an income that we got, we don't have to pay income taxes on that. So everyone that got the stimulus check now has to pay taxes on it. So, like, gave you money to take money away? Cool. All right. Any other questions on this? I know Anna, you said that you only got to a couple, but maybe you can like go forward, Rebecca. 
regards to this asset, so crowding out always increases, increases interest rates? That is, yes. Okay, so I want to I want to say a couple of things. Okay, a couple of things. I showed this, who I forgot, I forgot who I showed this to yesterday. So, expansionary fiscal policy lowers taxes and or raises government spending. That right there creates a deficit. Deficits cause crowding out, which means interest rates are going up. But then uh, vice versa, contractionary fiscal policy, which is higher taxes or lower government spending, will create a government surplus. Which means there's like, it's called crowding out, I'm going to say less supply of loans. That there's the tie into one of the funds. But when there's a surplus, that's called crowding in. And that doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen very often because how often do we have high taxes and low government spending? Um, so most questions are going to probably be crowding out questions, but there's a couple tomorrow that are crowding in. Okay. So like there are more crowding out, but don't think all of them are. Uh, which because there's less demand for loans. There's less demand for loans because you're running a surplus. I don't need a loan if I have all this extra money, and that makes interest rates go down. Together. Okay, so I, hold on, I can start anywhere and either work forwards or work backwards. So I could say lowering taxes does what to the interest rate? Then you have to like get under. Right, or I could say interest rates just fell. What type of policy created that? I go all the way back, it's like interest rates are low because no one's taking out a loan. Why would they take out loans? Because they have a surplus. Why would they have a surplus? Okay, surplus means they're bringing in more money but not spending as much. Okay, so spending is low, but taxes are high. That seems like it's slowing down the economy. That's contractionary fiscal policy. It's a lot more work. It's like, like thinking gymnastics, but you have to go forwards or backwards and pick this up at any spot and like what, what caused it or what is it going to cause? Rebecca? I was going to ask you a question, but why, why would there be less demand for loans if interest rates are low? No, no, no. Um, interest rates are low because there's less demand for loans. This is a cause. This is the effect. You cannot say, like, so this is the effect of this, which is the effect of this, which is the effect of this. But you can't say this causes this, which causes this. No, this is like A to Z. And so you can tell the story of A to Z or Z to A. Just know A to Z is cause, effect, 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 versus what caused me, what caused me, what caused me. Okay. How is this idea? Get it. Okay. Thank you for lying to me. No, I did. Okay. Do you know? I personally did. Okay. Um, remember, these policies expansionary and contractionary could either be automatic or discretionary. The question is, are taxes going up and down on purpose? Or are they going up and down because people are moving on and off tax brackets? And up and down, or, oh, sorry, on and off welfare and up and down tax brackets. Is most of this going to be usually discretionary? Because it's going to be both. Okay. I would so say not like one or the other. Right. I, I prepare for because I just roll up a little bit. So this is in. I want to say something. Is it? Ideas. Big ideas for unit five though, or unit four? This is unit four. What is this unit? I don't know. Four. It's uh, fiscal policy. Which is four. Yeah. Okay, so it is in the unit four folder in Schoology if you want to see it. We should have done it already, but whatever. Um, I know that y'all did big ideas five seconds ago before the binder check. Uh, speaking of, binder grades are in the gradebook. So if you want to go see what that did, binder grades are in the gradebook. Just keep in mind, we still have one more major grade. That's tomorrow. That's the test.
Okay, now I've lost all. Is only is the only reason that it's um, split into two like parts um, is we're doing this part of the unit this time. And then... uh, unit five, which is our compared absolute advantage, is split into two parts. But okay. all of unit four is on. Is like... it just because this is a shorter unit? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you see discretionary, that's on purpose. They are doing taxes and fiscal or taxes and government spending changes. On purpose, yeah. and I take the macro card. Hey, Anna. Um, what is zero for the quiz that I made up last week? I yes, I just put in grades that are here. Okay. There's a stack that I need to take. Okay. Yes, that was just. I just wanted to make sure. No, no, that I'm going to get that response. Okay. Yes, I I'm getting through it. <laughs> just wanted to make sure. Getting through. Um, automatic means automatic fiscal policy. It means tax brackets. It means government spending through welfare. What's another way to say welfare? Uh, transportation. Transfer payments. payments. Good job, Karen. So um, automatic policy could also be called, and you might have seen this today, built in stabilizers. Oh, yeah, we saw that. Built in stabilizers just means like we have built in policy through our tax brackets and through our welfare programs. It is fiscal policy is built into the system, so it happens automatically. So automatic and built-in stabilizers are synonyms. But what isn't a synonym at all is a natural stabilizer. <laughs> Asa, you okay there? <laughs> this was like literally my issue earlier today. I was getting like, mixed we were getting up. Those yes, yeah. and they know that you're going to get them mixed up, so they're always going to test them against each other because they know that is a common thing to mix up. Um, and so automatic policy, a.k.a. built-in stabilizers and discretionary policy are taxes and government spending. They're fiscal. Like the test is called fiscal policy. It's fiscal. But natural stabilizers is totally different. You've actually been tested on natural stabilizers in the last test. This is the I cannot lie, no policy, it's just aggregate supply. So we're not talking about tax brackets. We are talking about what's the key word Wages. here? Wages. Which is not fiscal policy because it's not taxes, nor is it government spending. It is on its own. You get rid of our tax brackets, you get rid of welfare, you get rid of Congress in general, and you're still going to have the natural stabilizers, which is not the same thing as built-in stabilizers and is not the same thing as automatic policy. These two things are together. Natural stabilizers are the thing on its own. Karen. So do natural stabilizers only affect aggregate supply? And yes. Um, fiscal policy only affects aggregate demand? Yes. So um, aggregate supply is affected by natural stabilizers, so short-run aggregate supply which therefore is also a shift of short run Phillips curve shifts are affected by natural stabilizers. But fiscal policy, whether it's discretionary or automatic, also called built-in stabilizers, shifts aggregate demand because taxes and government spending shift aggregate demand. So that shifts AD, which creates a movement on the short run Phillips curve. Oh. So discretionary is for aggregate Discretionary fiscal policy, mm -hmm. automatic fiscal policy, same thing as built-in stabilizers fiscal policy. Fiscal policy changes taxes and government spending, either on purpose or by accident. But taxes changes how much you can consume. Did you say welfare is automatic? Welfare is automatic. Yeah. Um, because welfare is government spending, but no, the government does not force you on or off welfare. You just naturally will get on or off because of like the business cycle. So automatic is just like people going up and down in tax brackets. Yes. Okay. Yes. I had a bad definition of automatic. I thought automatic was the natural stabilizers. No, lots of people do. They are not the same. One shifts aggregate supply, one shifts aggregate demand. So not only are like definitions wrong, how they affect the graph are, to are opposites. And so like, please do not confuse the two. Natural, natural. No government involvement. While built in, who do you think built it in? 
the government built it in. The, like Congress builds in our tax structure and like our welfare programs to have a policy happen automatically. Does that make sense? Okay. That's the main thing that people are going to trip up on tomorrow. I think that like trade agreements, people are like, ah, but that's like literally one question if you do that in FRQ. Um, are we, we're coming up with the trade agreement, that's right? Or one is going to be given to you. Okay. And it's going to be like, yay, nay. I don't know how we put those. So. A lot of people do, but really? they, they focus all on that. It's like one question, like one point. And then they completely miss the entire main point of the test. And the main point of the test is fiscal policy. Mm -hmm. And here are the big ideas between fiscal policy. And then here is what fiscal policy is usually paired against. Like, do you know the difference? Um, okay. So I said I just did. Automatic policy is a shift in, I mean, a movement in ADP. Sorry, a shift of AD, which is creates a movement on the short run Phillips curve. And wages and natural, natural stage of laser okay. is a shift of AD, which creates a movement on short run Phillips curve. I might be around. i got to go grab copies from the copy shop. Okay. So um, will you be able to take that really big box to the car? Yeah, they had a bunch of other free things, too, that looked like we could. I know, but it was all like used. And Did I was you like, go down there, or no? I sent a kid down there, thinking that it was going to be heavy. And the kid that I sent is like, well, this let's just say nice. he's missed the gym, um, <laughs> and so he was like sweating, bringing the box up here. I could probably sell this for like fifty bucks. No, we're going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a badminton set. Coach Weibel was getting rid of all this stuff, and it's like a brand new badminton set in a box. That sounds like a fun time, kids. All right. <laughs> With a little birdie. I'm like, All right. Uh, what? Um, in natural stabilizers are uh, supply shifts. Because of wages. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. It does. Economics, colon, yes. makes sense. So, so I keep much? telling people that it's really simple. They don't believe me. Okay. <laughs> Government shifts A, which causes short run to move down on the line. But it's not a shift. Short run Phillips curve. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah. Spending is a movement. <laughs> Government spending is a movement on the short run. Is that what he said? Yes. No, he said, he said it shifts the value of demand, but then comma, which is a movement on the short run Phillips curve. While wages is a shift of aggregate supply mm -hmm. and also a shift of the Phillips curve, but in the opposite direction. Yeah. Supply yeah. goes yeah, left, yeah. fills goes right. Supply goes right. I feel like if you left. get one, because I always remember that um, aggregate uh, aggregate supply has wages. So if I know one, you can usually do the opposite. Yes, yes, yes. I yes, have yes, that. Yes. Okay. What is the left curve? Is that going to be on here? That's two questions. Multiple choice questions. Because we went over it like a day and then never thought about it again. Like the Laffer curve no. is literally the next question. It doesn't question. move. That's why well, there's yes, only like two questions. Like if you look up AP classroom questions over the Laffer curve, they're like, we have two. So I just put Because yeah. we went over it for a day and then never talked about it. Yeah, because it doesn't do anything. It's like, it's like, oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Um, I, so I what, are, what are the questions like? Like which describes a relationship between, like what is a relationship between tax revenue and government spending? So Laffer curve. Uh, so we have tax rates on the X between like zero and 100%. Like how much of your paycheck am I going to take? And then this is government revenue. How much money is the government actually going to collect? And you think higher taxes, more revenue. That just makes sense. When they take more, they're going to get more. Enough to a point. And then higher taxes will actually bring in less money. Anyone remember why? Because people don't want to work. Right. And you can take 100% of my $0 paycheck because I'm not showing up if you're going to take all of it. So you can have all of it, but it's zero. And 100% is zero. It's zero. zero. And so there is some number x whatever the x is it's not exactly 50 percent it's just the way that it's drawn um hey mr farrell <gasps> do y'all talk about the laffer curve in your class no the only thing we talk about is fiscal monitoring policy yeah okay. but it's uh, part of fiscal look at that <laughs> <laughs> it's part of it. no uh maybe a little bit about inflation oh, yeah. and just how monetary policy is controlled but uh it's kind of, we really don't dive deep other than Mr. Ah. Yeah, so we can. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, 
<laughs> His uh, classes right now are giving him some really? edits. Ooh. We're probably better. Wait, our class was good. You loved our class so much. <laughs> that seems like sarcasm. Yeah. The second period was fun. Oh, I think I he liked how it was fun. I thought he liked second period. He liked second period. Or last semester. Oh, wait, no, he hated the period that was always No, Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. That was my class period. Yeah. They always cheated on everything. You got so mad yeah. about it. I remember they made you like retake an entire test and write two essays. Well, right? well, that was just because everybody did that on Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, y'all were cheating it. very well. No, like, they, they, they would cheat on every test and you get so upset about it. Oh, yeah. 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 Our class was segregated. Oh, my God. We had, huh? <laughs> we had one side of people who, like, tried really hard, and then one side of people who just, like, did not care. That's so true. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. I always get mixed up between um, expansionary and contractionary, like when raising taxes and when I was spending. Like, how, okay. Is there a way to remember that? Expansionary, and this is true for this unit and next unit, because next unit is monetary policy, and they have like expansionary monetary policy and contractionary monetary policy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't yes. make the uh, But the like word what? expansionary literally means what is it going to be? Yeah. No, well, like um, AD. It's to get out of respect. Yes, typically. I, that's what I can remember. I said if it's expanding it, it's to help us get out of something small. It, it's called this because that's the goal. The yeah. goal is to expand with expansionary fiscal or expansionary monetary. We, we don't know that yet. Notes. So it's contractor, this is inflation. Yes, I want yeah. to contract. So you title it not where you are on the business cycle, but what is your goal for the business cycle? Do you want to expand or do you want to contract? So expansionary increases aggregate demand while contractionary decreases aggregate demand. I just have a hard time remembering uh, which one raises government spending and lowers taxes. Well, just think about, scenario. like, does that give you more money? Like, I government pays me. So if they pay me more, I can buy more stuff. And they're in expansionary, it's lowering your taxes, so you have more money. Exactly. Okay. So not only are you so paying me more, money. I get to keep more of my paycheck. Okay. Small hole getting bigger, big hole getting Is this smaller. me? Yes, yeah, so. Oh, my God. Uh, so I know they... <laughs> That's y'all's test. You want to? I can help you out. No. <laughs> I can take a look at the test. <laughs> no, yeah. so that would be really helpful to your <laughs> Just let us look. Really helpful. That's the rest. <laughs> now bring back some memories. Progressive era. Quiz. Oh God. I, like I actually didn't mind the progressive era. I like. Yeah, this was. I was supposed to give the this. The triangle shirtwaist coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> You taught me. This was so fun. Yeah. You're they right. were online in my period. Yeah. Yeah. I want one. <laughs> Wait, why are you giving this away? This is Taylor's favorite teacher. So yeah. I never gave that quiz. Yeah, that's true. Why is it so Our long? Are we in Yeah, the three. Yeah. The quiz was just so Because you guys had the easiest class ever with everything online. Was, that was really cool. awesome, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I watched the online See, thing. I think that was when his time was so I know, good. that was my one Deep equalizer. But it's yeah. the same kind of thing. Yeah, you said I just want a Taylor so she doesn't feel low down. That's Taylor. <laughs> Taylor didn't take my class. <laughs> she she Taylor class. would have excelled. <laughs> you took AP. Wait, am I actually going to get to keep this? You might keep that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. You should sign them all. <laughs> I'm going to go home and put it on my wall. I'm going to sign my letters. Bring your yearbook. And I'll give like I'll a progressive era fact. <laughs> no, we have a random fact about a president. I can do that. Yes, <laughs> I will I be bringing my yearbook. Who asked? Who was the best looking president? Oh, that was um. Did I say JFK. George Washington? <laughs> <laughs> That's my go-to answer. Oh. JFK. JFK. Where who's the best looking uh, female first lady? Or first lady? Not other way around. Eleanor yeah. Roosevelt. <laughs> They should put Nancy Reagan in her German presentation. Nancy, I think I get it. She was waving next to people in funny costumes. Yeah, my German teacher did not like Barack. Oh no. Remember that question? I've already explained it, but I'm just a little bit confused. The one where it was like, they cancel each other out. Okay, why does that happen? Like, what happens to make that happen? Yeah, Asa was confused on that one too. Uh, 
I know. So imagine like a 75 pound year old kid, uh, like carrying it. Right, so. I mean, he looked like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> you know, he might see uh, this. He isn't, I don't, I'm not saying names. Are you fine with me leaving them with you? Am I going to go home? That's fine. Okay. Have fun. Bye-bye. Thank you, Box. Okay. <laughs> Do you like working in the same place as Mr. Taylor? Yes, because... We all know the same people, so when we trash talk people, we all know who we're talking about. Dang. Oh, just kidding, that never so happened. Do y'all trash talk students? Because like, I know y'all have had students in common. We like, compare me. notes. Yes. Well, like, that's, yes. A yes. That's, yes. that's a yes. It's more like if you cheated in, well, if you cheated like in U.S. history or world history, you're a government and eco teacher. Well, they know what time Before you walk in the door. Mm -hmm. Like, well, like, a first day of school, be like, oh, Taylor. Mm, <laughs> she's <Welcome. cheated. laughs> Yeah. So, like, spending increases, but they don't do anything to taxes, but the crowding out causes the interest rates to increase. Increase. Which then makes it go like this. Yes. Okay. And because they said equal amount, if they said government spending increases and crowds out some, Instead of an equal increases. amount, then, then it, it would just shift increase, to yeah. the right, right, shift to the left a little bit. So you still have prices and GDP both going up, increase. just not as much yeah. as the original shift to the right. But it would still say if it said if it crowds out like like a little or like yeah, out, they, they could then... say crowds out more. So then mm -hmm. it's like a shift to the right. So it still say increases for both, or would it, like would it be like increases and then decreases? So how would it be worded? Well, it so would be worded like this, but instead of equal amount, it would say no, just crowds okay. out a the answer. I'm oh, the answer. Would it be? No, it, it would just be increased because it, that's how yeah. it's on the other on the other. Okay, one. I was just then, I was wondering. So when like spending and taxes increase together or like decrease together, that just means that aggregate demand increases or decreases respectively, but only just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. because spending oh, because spending has a bigger impact on taxes, taxes to pay us, like, and then taxes was like, yeah. right. But then yeah. if they are, ooh ooh, okay. <laughs> so that was the last test. I, like I asked you that question a lot on the last test. Same thing here. Um, but now I can add. Well, now then, what happens to interest rates or deficit spending? Yeah. But if they are changing by the same amount, aggregate demand will still have an impact. Like they won't cancel each other out with aggregate demand. But our government budget is literally like taxes and spending. And there's no multiplier when it comes to the budget. There's a multiplier for aggregate demand. But the, when it comes to like deficits and surpluses, it will cancel each other out. So it wouldn't cancel each other out on aggregate demand because there's a multiplier, the spending multiplier, and that's spending is bigger than taxes. And so aggregate demand will still shift. But when it comes to like surpluses and deficits, if they are increasing taxes and spending by the same amount, we're decreasing them by the same amount, that will cancel each other out in terms of the budget and in terms of deficits and surpluses and crowding out. So interest rates shouldn't change, okay. if but equal, aggregate demand will. Okay. okay, so if they're equal, interest rates don't change. But aggregate demand will. will. Aggregate demand yes. yes. Yeah. That's where I get a little bit confused, like yeah. connecting the spending and the taxes to interest rates. Yes, Maybe so you have to connect the key, the, connect, the connection is does that taxes and spending change create a deficit or does it create a surplus? And remember a deficit is when, when taxes are less than spending. Like they spend more than what they collect in taxes and that raises interest rates. Raises interest rates to get them out of a recession. They, well, I already got you out of a recession. That's why I'm in the deficit to begin with, because oh, I increase spending okay. and I cut your taxes. Okay. And then I, the government, will go to the bank. I'll go to loanable funds and I'll take out that loan. But that leaves less supply for loans for everybody else. And whenever there's less supply of anything, the price of that thing is going to go up. Okay. And interest rates is the price of a loan. So it goes recession, then decreased huh. taxes, increased spending, then deficit, which causes the interest rates to increase. And then it'll be yes. Yeah, so like if the store, so like recession, expansionary fiscal policy, which remember is low tax, high government spending, but then that increases aggregate demand. That's the end of the short run. 
If I said, what are the short run effects? That's it. Mm -hmm. The long run effects happen later on when they're like, oh crap, we long, so it says short run, short run. Long run would be more like, oh yeah, so that like combo of like low taxes, more spending, that's deficits. Because the deficit takes time to accumulate. Like the I don't have any money is like the effect of this. And so, oh no, there's a deficit. So they borrow money. If they borrow money, then there's less supply of loans. And that right there raises interest rates. This secondary story is called crowding out. The second secondary story of how deficits lead to higher interest rates is the long run effects of deficit spending. Okay. That was the title of our notes, remember? Yeah. This is the long run effects of deficit spending. This is creating a deficit. So it's crowding out just now. Don't say natural. Word. Don't use that word. <laughs> Let's not use that word. Um, crowding out. No. Crowding out. It just happens. It no. is the long run consequence of government stepping in. Okay. So, like, it would, like, I think this when I drew it, it looks like it was a ship. Of what? Of the equilibrium and then. The shift of the short run aggregate supply. Then you are lo looking at the wrong thing. You are looking at the loanable funds market. That is not aggregate supply. That is the supply of loans. Okay. That is the loanable funds graph. And so that graph is the one that I'm mentioning right here. I did not draw it, but the less supply of loans can be seen. Real interest rates, quantity of loans, demand for loans, supply of loans. Not aggregate. That's only with aggregate supply and demand. Not short run or long run. That's only with aggregate supply and demand. But just a regular, just the demand for loans, the supply for loans. And if the government comes and takes it all, well, less for you then. Which raises the real interest rate. Ryan, you all right there? Yeah, I'm sorry. I know. I saw that like. <laughs> the zoning back in. Yes, it was the. I just realized that I zoned out for a second. Let me refocus. <laughs> okay. And well, Austin is fully embracing the zoning out. Playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> oh, really? Are we I don't know. People still play that. That's cute. He sometimes forces me to go with him to like parks and stuff. Austin. Forces? <laughs> yeah. Me? I'm a force no. party. Look at our level difference, okay? Uh, I only play it. When he forces I'm gonna, me to go I'm an addict. I know I'm an addict. <laughs> All right. Well, you gotta get that Charmander <laughs> EX legendary Pokemon. Those are all words that are in the Pokemon yeah. world. Just to let you know, I didn't make any of those up. You Amazing. are correct. I am correct. Yeah. I know. Wonderful and it's like rainbow. Sailing. Ooh, imagine a rainbow Charizard. Um, okay. Are we not Funds market, uh, yeah. Wait, wait, you have to draw it? it? Probably. I know what that is, but I don't. Can you, like, yeah, yeah, examples, question. Okay. Can, like, what would shift? Like, does the supply and demand shift on the same time? Oh, this. As I know this. Aggregate supply and aggregate. No. No. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> um, delete that. Hold on. Let's, let's work backwards. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. the, how, many, how many loanable funds things are uh, a, de a, a decent amount. What's the number one subject on the test? Are there any Probably hard fiscal words policy. we need to understand? Because I feel like there's always a really hard <coughs> that I don't understand. Okay, so here's the thing. You can always ask. Really? Okay. What's the worst I'm going to say? No. Yeah? <laughs> How mortifying. Um, but, like, I can say, because there are words, um, God, what was it? Oh, I think there's a word on there. It's not a word, but it's a phrase that says something, something, open market operations. Have you ever heard me say that? No. What because is that? that's unit six. What is that? It's unit six. It's the buying and selling of bonds. Well, are Which, we in unit five? True, but like the AP <laughs> test, the AP test assumes that you've taken the whole class. And so the answer choices are throw, throughout like the entire course. So if you see an answer choice and you're all like, I don't know this word. It's probably it's not it. it. <laughs> don't do that. You know how many people will be like, well, that was the only one I didn't know, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> if it's the only one you don't know, it's the one you cross off first. 
If test taking so everyone on the first test. test is to capital the entire test. Yes, I know. Felt right. yeah. yeah, we literally were walking down the hall. We we're like, I didn't know that, but I went with capital because this felt no, like the best. Answer. Capital was right. I got everything wrong. Okay, no. let me. Much let me go, but to the question, Nate. Hold on. Single one. That's so sad. That's, that's bad, you guys. I, I still did. Okay. I did it. You pass. I passed. You know, I, I haven't failed a test yet. Nice. It's, it's, it's just like the last the test is where we kicked my butt. How many tests are we Is there a way yeah. for me to go through and look at all this stuff? Ms. No. Taylor, are you going to make us take a final for the high school? Yes. No. Is it going to be hard? It'll be an AP exam. No. But what if we're just taking... Does everybody Do we have to... Can we exempt it? Is it for the you can school? exempt. But what if you can't exempt? Then you should have been better. You should have been better. Ms. Taylor, that's me. Yeah, what if we tried really, really hard and we just But it's like, get it? don't you just like want to hang out like one more day? No. Oh, well, like you then, then exempt. What if you miss like 15 days of school? Like, hey, you know. no one told you to get COVID. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think you're saying that. <laughs> you are going to get COVID as well, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> oh, just like, look away, look away, look away, look away. Okay, good. I thought it was going to highlight the right answer. And I no. didn't want you to see it. I want you to know I did not look away. <laughs> okay. So it says, which of the following changes would most likely uh, cause an increase in interest rates in the short run? Okay. Um, you could probably use some elimination based yeah. on words you don't oh. know. There's I think it's the one with the words I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually the one I picked no. the first time you did this to. Do we have an idea? Like, let me see on um, like your hands. Like, A is one, B is two, C is three, four is C, five is E. Yeah, you can. Context clues, people. Context yeah. clues. Okay. Anna, you have a face. Okay. I, I know which ones I can eliminate. You are far. Okay, oh, yeah. so there is, you're right, it is D, but here's the distractor. So yeah, I was Because an increase of trade deficits is all about imports and exports. If I said an increase of government deficits, then oh, that would the have been right. You know, like deficit spending so is government spending with that's taxes so and government spending. Trade deficit is net exports yeah, being negative. And that's Right, and so this is the correct answer. Um, but like, is that you could have asked on a test, what is financed by mean? That just means paid for by. Yeah. So like a government spending is paid by borrowing. It's paid for by borrowing. I thought it would be, at first I thought it was E, because isn't that the price of um, Isn't that a reaction to bond? interest rates? Isn't a bond like? Do you know what a bond is? It's like a bond to... Have I said the word bonds much? You said it a second ago. Okay. Uh, <laughs> bonds is monetary policy, which we haven't talked about. Okay. This so is monetary not, policy, yeah, well, this is monetary policy, that, yeah. and this is monetary policy. I said eliminate so like, C and E instantly. Don't go... E with instantly, with big don't go okay, <laughs> also, this actually is proven right more cases than it's proven wrong. If you honestly have not a clue, like you cannot narrow it down at all, Longest answer wins. You know, that's what I do. Like, if you go and through that rule, <coughs> you could probably get like a solid 50 just by picking the longest answer. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's honestly, yeah. US history. Just, I survived through that. Exactly. <laughs> just finding the longest answer in words that I semi recognize, that was my answer. Because it was a time limit. I just had the to, like, time limits quickly. Were so hard. Okay, this one's not too shabby. Okay. This one might push you a little bit. Here, let me. Ugh. Is anyone allergic to peanuts in here? No. no Survival the fittest, my friend. That's what I'm saying. If Dude, that's what I've said to Wade every flesh. single day for six years, and every single day she says, I'm going to snap your neck. I'm going to say that. <laughs> that would be survival of the fittest. A lady? 
like, is oh, allergic. Elaine oh, is Elaine. Elaine. really allergic and I, to I eat peanut butter all the time around her. <laughs> when I was a kid, I would, like, always bring um, sandwiches on the bus for dinning, and then she would make me throw it away. It was so sad. I just say survival what a bully. to keep eating. What does it mean, equilibrium? Okay, okay. so, um, what's an equilibrium? So, like, could you, uh, boops are equilibriums. When we go boop, 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 oh, boop, okay. like where they intersect is equilibrium. So it's saying which one will cause the boops to be higher for a real interest rate? Like which one would just raise the interest rate? Um, because it's saying equilibrium real interest rate, it's, want you, it's wanting you to think of a graph. Yeah. It's wanting you to think of little funds because it's saying equilibrium. Okay, so that's, that's an intersection in a graph. So what intersection in a graph has real interest rate? Oh, loanable funds. Now this is a loanable funds graph question. It is not E. Let's get rid of E. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Let's get rid of E. Yeah. Why not C? Because surplus equals down in interest rates. Yes, because yeah. yeah. surpluses, you know what I don't no longer need in, like, if I have a surplus, I don't need a loan. So then if you were graphing, loans, here's demand for loans, here's supply for loans. Me, I'm sitting here nice and pretty with a massive surplus, and I'm the government. The surplus, I don't even need loans. So you could say there's more supply for loans for you guys, or you could say, I don't even need loans, says the government, there's less, there's less demand for loans. And you're right, that lowers the interest rate, and that's called crowding in. Yeah. It's definitely not B either, because that's, that's also like crowding huh? in. Austin, they're the exact opposite. Oh, oh and decrease in the yeah. government, and the statement. Yeah, C and D are the same. Yeah. Just an increase of surplus means there's a decrease in the deficit. And if this is wrong, at least the same, then these have to be wrong. So it's either A or B. It's A because B would be an increase in supply. Because that is where loans come from, kids. When a mommy bank and a daddy bank love each other very much. That is where, if you if you increase the supply of savings, you're saving money in a bank. And that's where supply of loans comes from. So that actually lowers the interest rate. So how is it this? Because more people want more money. That means the supply goes down. Which more and the people. Demand goes to the right. Because there's some more demand. For what? Because who's taking out loans? The Use other words. Businesses. Businesses. Remember, businesses spending money is investment. Like C I G X N investment spending is business spending. And so businesses take out loans and if they have more demand for loans then they're like more demand for business spending, then they're going to demand more loans. And if demand for loans increases just to the right, your boop boop boops for interest rates are going to go up. But that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> How are we feeling? Oh, I, so, you tell me, um, like you list like supply shifts right during crowding out, or supply shifts, shifts right left for crowding out, right, right for crowding in, demand shifts left for crowding in, and right for, right for crowding out. Okay. You pick your favorite. <laughs> yeah, I always think. Wait, you can do either, right? You can do either. I might go because I'm me. No. Um. I might go. Uh, have like a scenario towards the end of the test, just maybe, where I say something, something. I think I was either crying out or crying. It's one or the other. Um, but it was all like <sighs> demand for loans goes up. Demand for loans goes down. Supply for loans goes up. Supply for loans goes down. And this is like A, B, C, D. But then the answer choices are like A and B, B and D, A and C, and then D and whatever. But here's the thing. Here's what you need to do. You don't do this. You think crowding out interest rates, which combo would make my boo boo boops higher? It. Demand goes up, supply goes down. Yes. Or if it's like, oh, it's a surplus. So interest rates are going to go down because it's like crowding in. 
which two shifts would make lower. Like you could just draw a quick little picture. Like you don't have to label anything. You just sketch out real quick. So I'm sorry, I hate to make you guys one more time. Will you repeat what you said to her one more time? Can you, can you repeat the for crowding out to man? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I just need space and space. So, do you sleep with you? Yes, I'll take that. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's what you put? That's embarrassing. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know you as history. He's, this might as well be Greek. I would be a U.S. history teacher. You don't have to have a wide knowledge of U.S. history. You're telling me your husband does not dream about U.S. history? I don't believe that. Seriously. He's he watches <laughs> So, it's your very kind of history. What do you want me to title it? Crowding and crowding out? Yeah. Okay. J distractor. That might have an interesting question to ask me. What's up? Thank you. What's your favorite kind of history? I like, like, what's the thing? Era 60s through 2000s. In America? That's really interesting to me. You did put in uh, good for that. I did really good. Okay. Crowding out is caused by a deficit. Either more demand for loanable funds or less supply for loanable funds. Crowding in is caused by a surplus. And when I have a surplus, there's going to be less demand for loanable funds, which means there's going to be more supply of loanable funds. You're actually so bad at this. Are you okay? What'd yeah. you do? <laughs> try to catch an M&M in your mouth? I got it first try. No, you didn't. But now I'm on like fifth try and I haven't gotten another. Oh, well you should have stopped while you were ahead. <laughs> there will be any M&Ms left on the floor. I missed my rats. So I hope that they would come back. <laughs> okay. How are we feeling? Much better. Alright. I wonder I missed something. Narrative and absolute advantage. Is that, I, I is there going to be a lot of that on the I, I know that very well. Just the notes of that day, I just... Yes. That, that, that day was good on the quiz, but... So that would be like... But, but I get this, actually. Wages and input prices and supply shifts. Yeah, you just went over all that. Yes. Never mind, I'm good on that. Is there... Yeah, I was good at the... I'm good at the... Uh, Compared to absolute. Trade. Yeah, I'm good at that in the trade agreements. I'm, I'm good on that. People always... Either they hate compared absolute advantage or they like. I like it. it. This is the one thing I understand. Yes, and that's what it's people fractions. say every year. I love that. I don't like fractions, but I understand how to do this. Mm -hmm. Yes. I get it. So, loan all that. Loanable funds correlates a lot with crowning in and crowning out. Not a lot. They go hand in hand. You can't talk about, like, you can't talk about longer economic growth without the PDF. Rate. You can't yeah. talk about crowding in and crowding out without loanable funds. It is the key. I have to go to work. Thank you. I have to leave work. <laughs> Where'd you go? Russian. Oh. Well, so, like, what do you really offer? Like, I've only heard bits and pieces of that. I'm a teacher. Well, so I'm a coach. Oh, that's so cool. I coach two year olds to um, 18 year olds. It sounds like a lot of uh, legal details. Do you care what we label them? Yeah, so. Maybe two year olds. If it's an FRQ. It will tell you how to label it, and you have to label it that. If it doesn't tell you how to label it, then you can just do like ones and twos. Okay. Yes. Oh, wait, no, this isn't a test question. This is just this a is really question. I love this one. So, like, you know how, like, like you would have, like, a practice test for the AP test? Do you, do you, would you see that? Like, what do you mean? Like, like are we going to, like, review? No, like, like a, a mock test? A mock AP test? Yeah. Yes. Also AP test? Yes. What if that kind of does my high school? No. Nice try though. Um it, the mock AP test is a partner test. Six for better Okay, what if I'm gonna have to take that with a normal professional setting? And then that's what if we, what if we just take the final instead of taking that test? <laughs> no. So, um, Nice try. Will you curve the final? Of course. Okay. I feel like it's going to be the not as smart people. 
so maybe yes, it's exactly. It's yeah. gonna be me. Wait, the people who sucked in school. So it'll be a heavy curve because they couldn't make eighty five. That way. Woo! Yeah, but yeah, like, but like I don't want to just fail my. No, door. there's gonna be one person that is just. They're just gonna do it on absences, but they're still gonna be smart. So it's still gonna get a hundred on that. That's final. gonna be me. <laughs> just saying. Um, what was I say? Oh, the partner one, which I mean, it's not until like April, there's May. A there's a no partner mock. And then the actual AP exam, and then the final exam. What are all AP exams? What if you're not taking the exam? And you still be taking two. Can you check to see if you So I, I still have to take the partner one. You still have to take the partner one. Uh, you have the partner one. is random. Oh. oh. I really feel bad for everyone. I feel like what if you get No, I feel bad for Carson, if you're watching I this, I don't <laughs> want to take it with you. <laughs> oh my god, stop, Austin. <laughs> 